Climate change is an international predicament that is affecting organisms through global warming and habitat destruction. Among these organisms are hornets, honeybees, bumblebees, and many other bee species. Many of these bees were threatened before the effects of climate change started showing, but are now in greater danger due to human activity. As of right now, society continues to question the accuracy of global warming theories. I definitely do believe that climate change is actually happening. The way that bees are affected by climate change is, is kind of complicated, but mainly it affects um, the way that they spend the winter and then how they wake up in the spring. And lots of, there are lots of different bee life cycles and um, different bees are affected in different ways, but that's one of the ways. The other way is through the plants that they eat. So climate change is gonna have big impacts on plants. The, so some plants wouldn't be able to produce seeds and reproduce without bees, helping them move that pollen around. Um, so that's probably the number one impact. And then uh, some of those plants produce food for us, so they're affecting us by helping um, you know, a, a large part of our food supply, up to two-thirds of it, is in some way um, due to pollination from bees. So that's a huge impact. A thing that people maybe don't realize that how bees impact other organisms is that they're actually hosts to parasites and other microorganisms that are part of their, um, their microbiome and, and that live off of bees um, that also are affected by bees because they're providing uh, food to these other organisms. If, if the flower doesn't bloom at the right time and the bee's not there when it does bloom, then that flower loses out because it's missing its pollinator and the bees lose out also. Um, spatial mismatch is probably going to be a more widespread problem for a lot more bees because um, what's going to happen with climate change is, is plants are going to start moving northward. Um, from where they normally would be and, and up higher into mountains as the climate warms. And so that's going to cause problems especially uh, for our tropical bees too. Um, uh, in, in the north, northern latitudes and southern latitudes, bees are going to be able to adapt a little bit better than in the tropics. Climate change has been slowly incorporating into our society for years, but due to human activity, the bees are suffering a little bit more. Some of the biggest threats aren't, aren't exactly directly due to climate change, but they are um, making the effects of climate change worse, and climate change is making the effects of these other things worse. So things like habitat destruction, um, reduction in plant diversity, um, pesticide use, especially insecticide use, those kinds of things are already affecting the bees and have been affecting them for a long time. And as climate change makes, uh, you know, the bees have to move their range where they live around, uh, and then those protected areas that we do have for the bees, the natural habitats, um, are maybe not gonna be as good for them anymore and they don't have anywhere else to go. Emerging earlier in the spring with some of our other bees that are not social, they don't live in a big hive like honeybees do, they spend the winter underground or in a sheltered area and so the, the speed with which it warms up in the spring can affect when they become active and start moving around. Um, in a place like here where there's lots of snow, that insulates everything so the air temperature has somewhat less of an effect but it will eventually, um, you know, as the planet warms more and more, start to affect them quite a bit. Saving the little organisms that help our ecosystem run is a key step for our future. Not only the future of our bees, but also the future of our lives. Yeah, lots of things that humans can do to um, help bees from the effects of climate change. And there are a lot of the same things that they can do um, to protect them from pesticides and things like that. You can um, use less insecticides and um, even herbicides around your house. So keeping that lawn, trying to keep that lawn weed free is, is a goal of a lot of people, but really um, you can do less work in your yard to help the bees. You can stop using chemicals on your lawn, let some weeds grow in there. Those weeds will produce flowers. You can even plant flowers for bees. Native plants are um, always better. Bees like, like those native plants. And you can um, 
even provide habitat. You can set aside a part of your yard and plant plants for bees. You can provide nesting habitat. Um, a lot of bees nest in the soil, so and they like kind of patchy areas in the sun, patchy areas where maybe the grass isn't growing in as well. So that's an opportunity for you to do less work. You can leave your lawn, don't have to reseed it, and you can let the bees live there, put up a little sign. Bee, this is bee habitat so your neighbors don't complain, they'll understand, uh, things like that. You know, providing um, in your own yard resources for bees is a really good thing to do.